Okay, so we we are talking about linear transformation. So basically, just to recap, we have two vector space uh, u and v over the same field F. So we have two vector spaces u and v over the same field F. So a mapping from u to v is called linear transformation. If the if this property satisfy p of a alpha plus b beta can be written as a t alpha plus b t beta. And if this is true for all a b coming from the scalar and for all alpha beta are the vector from u. And this will be a vector in V and this will be a vector in V and that is why we need to have the same uh, field. So, we can operate this. So, this will be again a uh, vector in V. So, if this is this is true then we know this is the definition of the linear transformation. Now, we will talk about uh, some operation on the linear composition of two linear transformation. Okay. So, suppose we have three vector space u v w over the same field. So, you have a vector space u v and suppose you have a another vector space w and both are over the same field f. Okay. So, we have basically three vector space and we have a two linear transformation one is from say u to v and another one is say s from v to w. So, we have another mapping which is s from v to w. Okay. So, they let this to be let T and S uh, be to linear mapping, linear transformation or mapping. Okay. So, now first of all this is a linear mapping. So, it is a mapping T and U both are a mapping. So, T is a mapping from U to V and S is a mapping from v to w. Now, if you consider the composition of this, this is also a mapping. So, composition means we take a element alpha from here. So, we apply t. So, this will give you give us t alpha and then on this, this is element in v. So, if we apply s on this, so this is s of t alpha. So, now if you consider this mapping, say uh, composition mapping which is denoted by S compose T. This is a mapping. So, this mapping. So, so it is basically a mapping from uh, U to W. So, we take a alpha from U. So, S compose T alpha is basically we first apply T alpha then it will be an element in V. Once it is an element in V we can apply the S on it. So, this is basically our uh, composition, how we define the composition. So, this is the compost mapping. Now, we want to check whether this is also a linear mapping or not, linear transformation. So, that we have to check. So, for that what we need to check? We need to check the, uh, we need to take 2 a b from the scalar and we need to verify that. So, this uh, uh, a alpha a alpha 1 plus b beta 1 or a alpha plus b beta, a alpha plus b beta, if we can write this S compose T on this, if it can be written as S compose T A, A S compose T alpha plus b S compose T beta. If we can show this, then by definition this S compost T is a linear function, linear mapping, sorry, linear transformation. Yeah, all are same basically. So, this in short we denote by S T basically. So, this is basically S T in short we denote. So, we want to show this. So, let us try that. So, S T of this is basically So, S t of this is basically uh, by definition 
we first apply T on this A alpha plus B beta, then we apply S on this. So, this is basically the composition of two mapping. Okay. So, now how to write this? So, this can be written as uh, so then T is a linear mapping. So, T can be written as A. So, uh, so T can be written as A T alpha plus B T beta since T is linear since T is linear transformation. So, by the property of linear transformation we can write that. Okay, so, basically we have this. Now, S is also linear. So, if S is linear we can write this as. Uh, so, this is some gamma 1 gamma 2. So, basically uh, A of S of T alpha plus B of S of T beta. This is because uh, S is linear. This is because S is linear. So, that means, the S t, S t of A alpha plus B beta is nothing but A s of A t A into T of alpha plus B S of T beta. So, this is nothing but A s t alpha plus B S T beta and this is true for all alpha beta and all A B. So, this implies S T which is basically S compost T is a linear mapping is yes, linear. So, this is the proof of linearity of this composition. Okay. So, the composition if S and T are both linear then the composition mapping is also composition function is also a linear function. Okay, now, we will define the inverse of a transformation. So, we just define the inverse linear transformation inverse of a linear mapping. Okay. Now, we know the suppose we have a mapping from u to v. So, suppose we have a two vector space u v over the same field f. So, this is our t. Okay. Now, we, we suppose this is a this is a linear mapping. Suppose this is a linear transformation or linear mapping. Okay, now, this is a mapping. Now, we know uh, the mapping has the inverse if this is a this transformation is 1 to 1 and 1 to. So, suppose this T is bijective basically bijective mapping that means, it is 1 to 1 and 1 to. Okay. If it is 1 to and then 1 to, then we can have a inverse. So, how we define the inverse? So, inverse is also a mapping. So, this T inverse which is a mapping from V to U. So, how to define that? So, suppose this is beta. So, this is alpha. So, alpha is going to beta. So, T inverse of beta will be alpha if and only if T alpha equal to beta. And since it is 1 to 1, T is 1 to 1. So, there is only one alpha which is going to beta. So, that, that means, this T inverse is well defined. Okay. That, this means, T inverse is a mapping. T inverse is a mapping because 
this T is bijective T is 1 to 1 and as well as it is 1 to. So, the range of T is covering the whole V. So, that means if you take any element of beta over here it has a pre image over here. So, this is a well defined mapping. Now, we have to check whether this mapping is also a linear transformation or not. Yes, this is a linear transform, but that needs a proof. So, we have to check this inverse is also linear transformation is not or not. So, let us try that. So, so for that, so let us take T inverse of uh, A L A beta 1 plus B beta 2. Okay. So, we have say we take 2 point beta 1 and beta 2 in V and we want to write this as for linear transformation we need to write we need to. So, this is A T inverse of beta 1 plus B T inverse of beta 2. Okay, so, that means this is basically how we can write that. So, this beta 1 beta 2 belongs to V that means there exists alpha 1 alpha 2 belongs to U such that T alpha 1 equal to beta 1 and T alpha 2 equal to beta 2 okay. such that T alpha 1 equal to beta 1 T alpha 2 t is equal to beta 2. So, now what we do? We just take this uh, now what is the uh, A alpha 1 plus B alpha 2. So, if we apply T on it now T is a linear transformation. So, this will be written as A T alpha 1 plus B T alpha 2. Now, A T alpha 1 is basically beta 1 plus B beta 2. So, that, that means T of this is this. So, that means T inverse of this is basically A alpha 1 plus B alpha 2. This is coming from this fact. Okay. So, now this is nothing but uh, A, A T alpha 1, alpha 1 is equal to uh, alpha 1 is equal to T inverse of beta 1. So, this we can write as a T inverse of beta 1 plus B T inverse of beta 2, because alpha 1 alpha 2 is coming alpha 1 alpha 2 is images beta 1 and beta 2 that is it. So, this is the definition of this implies T inverse is a linear mapping. So, if T is linear then T inverse is also linear transformation. Okay. So, this is the uh, this is the inverse of a linear transformation is also linear, but for to exist the linear mapping we need to have this um, this T should be a bijective mapping. Okay. So, now we will define isomorphism or isomorphic between two vector space. So, first let us define the when we call a linear transformation is isomorphism. So, isomorphism. Okay. So, it is basically a bijective mapping. Any bijective mapping is called isomorphism. Any so suppose we have a vector space U and V, let this be a linear mapping, linear mapping. Uh, between linear mapping from u to v from two vector space u to v and these two vector space has to be over the same field over the that is most important same field f over the same scalar field f. Okay. Now, this t is called then T is called a isomorphism and isomorphism prism if T is bijective, if T is bijective that means it is 1 to 1 and 1 to.
1 to 1 and on to mapping. If both on to and on to, then we call the mapping is a bijective mapping. So, if uh, if t is bijective, then we call t to be a isomorphism, and then this vector two vector space are isomorphic. If there exist a bijective linear transformation between u to v, then we call a vector space to be isomorphic, and then it is denoted by u. So, that means, uh, if there is a linear transformation which is bijective, then we call the two vector spaces isomorphic. So, u and v, this is isomorphic, you can use this symbol isomorphic. So, u and v is isomorphic, if there exists a linear transformation, linear mapping t from u to v which is bijective. So, that means, if there is a isomorphism between u and v which is bijective, then we call these two vector space are isomorphic u and v. Okay. Now, we have some theorem. So, if u v are isomorphic, then they have a same dimensional vector space and conversely, if they have a same dimensional vector space, then it has to be isomorphic. So, we have we will just write the theorem in a proper way. This, this theorem is telling let u and v be two finite dimensional vector space to finite dimensional vector space, vector space over the same field, this is important, otherwise we cannot define the mapping over the same field f, then then u v are isomorphic, if the dimension of u is equal to dimension of v, then u and v are isomorphic, if and only if the dimension is same, if and only if dimension of v is equal to dimension of v. Okay. So, this is the theorem. So, you have to prove this theorem. So, there are two parts. One part is if they are isomorphic, then the, then their dimension must be same, first part, and second part is if the dimension is same, we have to prove they are isomorphic. So, let us try to prove the first part. Suppose they are isomorphic U and V. So, that means this implies there exists a bijective mapping from U to V bijective linear transformation from u to v. Okay, since t is bijective, then the kernel of t is basically only the 0 vector of u. Kernel of t means the set of all vectors which are mapped to the 0 vector. Now, since t is bijective, that means t is 1 to 1 and we have seen in the previous class that for a one to one mapping the kernel is 0, the only 0 will map to this. Okay. Now, kernel is 0 means dimension of the kernel is basically kernel is 0 vector dimension kernel is 0 and it is on to. So, that means, it is uh, t is on to also t is on to means the range of t is basically v, because it is on to mapping. Okay. So, this means dimension of range of t is same as dimension of v, 
Now, we know in the last class the rank nullity theorem that is telling the dimension of the kernel of T plus dimension of the uh, range of T is equal to dimension of the domain dimension of V. So, now this is 0 this implies now this is 0 so the dimen and this is the on 2 so dimension of V is equal to dimension of V. So, this is the first part of the theorem. So, if these two are uh, if there is a bijective mapping then their dimension is same and the second part of the theorem is if their uh, dimension is same then we have to show that they are isomorphic that, that means we need to define a uh, linear transformation which is bijective. So, let us try that this is the second part of the theorem conversely conversely suppose uh, dimension of u is equal to dimension of v we have two vector space u v which are finite dimensional and their dimension is same. Okay. So, now let us take a uh, basis on u. So, say alpha 1 alpha 2 say, say, say their dimension is say n there are n number of vectors in the basis for both u and v. So, say uh, beta uh, b u is equal to alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha n is the basis of u. So, this is u. Let b u be basis of u and b v we take beta 1, beta 2, beta n be a basis of v. Okay. They are same dimensional. So, number of vectors in the basis will be same and that is n. So, this is a basis, this is a basis. Now, we defined a linear transformation from u to v like this. So, T of alpha 1 is going to beta 1 like this, T of alpha 2 is going to beta 2 okay. and dot 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 in general T of alpha is going to beta i. So, dot 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 T of alpha n is going to beta n. Okay. So, this is the way we define the linear transformation. Now, this is uh, this is a so this is a linear transformation from u to v. Now, how we get this transformation? Suppose we take a alpha from here alpha is some a, a 1. So, alpha is a member in u. So, it can be written as a linear combination of the vector in the basis alpha n. So, how we define T alpha? T alpha it is a linear transformation T alpha is defined as a 2 T alpha 2 a n T alpha n. So, this is basically a 1 beta 1 plus a 2 beta 2 a n beta n. So, this is the way we define the t from u to v. We take any alpha from u and this is the way we define this. Okay. Now, we will show this t is a uh, bijective mapping. So, for that first of all we need to show t to be a 1 to 1. So, for 1 to 1 we need to show kernel of t is 0, 0 means the 0 vector of u. So, what is the, so suppose alpha belongs to kernel of t, let alpha belongs to kernel of t. So, that means t alpha is going to 0 vector of v, now t alpha is nothing but this. So, a 1 beta 1 plus, so so, suppose al yeah, alpha is a member of this, suppose alpha is written as this. Okay. So, that means this, so that means a a 1 beta 1 plus a 2 beta 2 dot 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 
a n beta n this is 0 vector of v. So, now these are linearly independent beta i i are linearly independent l i. So, this implies all the a i s are 0. Okay. So, all the a i s are 0. So, since all the a i s are 0 that means alpha is basically summation of a i alpha i alpha is 0 vector of u. So, that, that means only so that, that means kernel of p is only consists of 0 vector of u. Okay. So, that means this t is this implies t is 1 to 1. Now, we need to show that uh, t is on to also for that we use you will will use the rank plus nullity theorem. So, we know that kernel dimension of kernel of t plus dimension of range of t is equal to dimension of u this is the rank nullity theorem. Now, this we have seen this is 0 because dimension is 0 because this t consists kernel of t consists of only 0 vector of u. So, 0 plus dimension of is equal to dimension of u which is same as dimension of v. So, that is the assumption we made. So, this means dimension of range of t is basically dimension of v. So, this implies range of t is basically the whole set v. So, this implies t is on to mapping. So, this implies uh, t is on to. So, we have seen t is on to and t is on to. So, t is bijective and this implies that uh, u and v are isomorphic if they have same dimension, if they have same dimension they are isomorphic. Okay. Now, we will quickly show another result on this isomorphism. Suppose, uh, this is another theorem, let v be a uh, finite dimensional, be a n dimensional vector space, dimensional vector space. over the field f vector space over the field f then v is isomorphic with f n f n is the basically cartesian product f cross f cross s yes, the cartesian product of this so so this is a uh, this this will uh, so, this how to prove this? Okay, so uh, since time is over, so we will prove it in the next class. Thank you.